Hi guys, my name is Valen. Welcome to my channel. Today we are reviewing The Shallows. Um, it didn't have the greatest ratings on like Rotten Tomatoes and even IMBD, but I don't know. It didn't seem as bad as everybody made it out to be. So the, um, the movie starts off with a boy on the beach playing by himself. He finds like a GoPro helmet near some rocks on the beach and he starts to watch the recording. He sees some pretty cool scenes of some guys surfboarding, but then everything goes wrong when they're attacked by a shark. You actually see the shark speeding towards the surfer and the camera. Understandably terrified, the boy runs off with a helmet, probably to tell someone what he found. They go to a different scene and enter Blake Lively, a pretty American vacationing in Mexico. She, she's excited to get to the beach because her mother came to that specific one she, when she found out she was pregnant with her. She overshares everything with her driver, and that's just so American. <laughs> they get to the beach, and the water's gorgeous, of course. There's some lighthearted conversation between her and the driver, and she asks what the beach is called. He completely ignores her question twice and just tells her to be careful. Ooh, spooky. She finds a spot to put her things and gets ready to go surfing. The cinematography is absolutely striking in this movie. You get underwater shots of the waves going over and it's just really gorgeous. Two other surfers start talking to her and one of them has a GoPro helmet. Hmm, what a coincidence. She shows off her surfing skills to the two locals that are playfully teasing her about um, her being from Texas. Yes, show them, boys. <laughs> More awesome cinematography for several minutes. Blake gets out of the water for lunch break and watches the two other surfers and plays on her phone while she relaxes a bit. From the picture she looks at, we find that her mother died of cancer. She starts FaceTiming her younger sister and she warns her about being alone on the beach. After a brief casual conversation, their father takes the phone and is casually surprised that Blake... Her name is Nancy in the movie, but I'm just going to call her Blake. <laughs> is at a beach in Mexico. It doesn't really sound like a natural conversation. He's worried, but he just doesn't react like a father would if his daughter was suddenly in Mexico and not in med school in the States. She hangs up from him and then goes back into the water. Her two new friends start to head back to the shore and warn her it's getting late, but she wants to catch one more wave. After they depart, she gets an eerie feeling and pulls her feet up on her board. She seems to sense something, but we just get fake out jump scared by a bunch of CGI dolphins. They don't look the greatest. They don't look entirely fake, <laughs> but you can just kind of tell it's computer generated and definitely not real authentic dolphins. We get a view overhead of a very big dead whale and a bunch of blood in the water. A bunch of birds run into Blake and all of the confusion and the uh, binging of dead whale carcass. <laughs> and she flips over on her board and a shark swims under her. It seems to be curious despite the big, fat, delicious, blubbery whale in the water. Yeah, that makes sense. It charges at her board and she gets knocked into some rocks. She almost makes it back to her board when the shark grabs her leg and starts a chomping. She screams underwater and you hear the crunching of her bones. Ugh. Her leg remains intact though and she climbs onto the dead whale. She uses her you you Oh my god, I'm having a stroke. Urethane <laughs> cord to wrap it. <sighs> okay, take three. She uses her urethane cord to wrap it around her leg like a tourniquet. You can't say that she isn't quick thinking in the moment, at the very least. She sees the guys leaving and screams out to them, but they can't hear her over the wind and the waves. The whale starts to move in sync with the waves as the shark resumes feeding on it. It wouldn't have stopped in the first place for a skinny white toothpick. The shark charges for the whale again, and she decides to jump off and swim like crazy for a rock nearby. She makes it, but not before stepping on some coral and injuring her foot badly. She talked herself through stitching up her leg with her earrings. I'm not really sure what that is, but it looks pretty gory. 
She wraps her wetsuit around it to keep it protected and lays there while a seabird keeps her company. She wakes up in the cold after midnight and takes her wetsuit top from her leg to wrap it around her shoulders and loosens the tourniquet to get her blood flowing for a little bit. She finds little crabs crawling all over her and tries to eat one, but she vomits it back up immediately. The seagulls seem to like it, though. That was pretty gross. It's six in the morning at low tide, and the whale is still in the water. Well, obviously, it wouldn't be anywhere else, but it's still, like, in view near the surface. Blake gets back in the water, seeing her surfboard not too far off. She's almost back to her board, but she sees a shark and races back towards her rock, where the bird is. I'm going to be real for a second. Between the whole ass whale and a tiny, bony animal, the shark is just not going to pay attention to her. It would just eat it, eat the whale, until it's like stuffed full and is like in a comatose state because they get that way when they binge on whale or another huge animal, mostly whale. Um, just because you're in the water doesn't mean a shark is going to eat you or even investigate you. I don't know if I've said this before, but a lot of the times you can be in the water, like at the beach, you can be like 15 feet from a shark and you'll never know it because they don't give a shit about you. <laughs> Even besides that, sharks are not picky eaters. It's not going to binge on a whale and then be like, oh, wonder what that tastes like. And like just swim over and take a bite out of Blake. Like that, that doesn't happen. I've probably emphasized this too much at this point, but that, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> After she gets back to her rock, um, she sees a man laying on the beach. She tries to get his attention and succeeds, but he's drunk out of his mind. He doesn't think she's in danger, so he just waves her like an idiot. She tries to communicate to him that uh, her telephone is in her bag, but being a drunkard and an asshole, he pockets her phone and her money. Then he takes her bag and starts to walk off. He sees her surfboard, and I guess he wants that too, but he can barely get on it and starts to go back to the shore. She tries to warn him about the shark, but he's drunk and doesn't care. She watches in horror as he's attacked. We see him crawling towards the shore, leaving behind his legs. Um, one thing about this movie is that, as I said before, like when Blake was trying to sew up her leg, uh, it does get pretty gory. Like, I'm a bit of a wimp, um, and my stomach turned, you know, like once or twice during all of this. <laughs> um, so, you know, if you like gore, then you might actually appreciate this movie at least a little bit um, in an artistic sense. The two boys from the day before come back and they go in the water. Blake tries to tell them to go back, but they don't believe her. One of them gets charged at and you see the shark in midair with the uh, blonde guy in his mouth. The other one with the GoPro attempts to make it to her, but he, seeming he seemingly gets swallowed. He ends up at a rock on the other side, and he's frantic to try and get up there with her. She tries to help him, but the shark pulls him down, and he's gone as well. Hours later, she gets part of his boogie board and covers her face with it from the bright sun. I guess while she's bored on the rock, um, after the sun goes away, she fixes the seagull's wing. That was really nice of her. Through the movie, I was kind of worried that she'd like break its neck or something and try to use it for bait to distract the shark, but I'm glad they didn't go there. <laughs> the shark keeps going from her to the whale, and she times it. She goes over to another rock to try and get the GoPro. She doesn't get it the first time and fucks her feet up again on some coral, but she does get it the second time. The shark nearly beaches itself trying to get to her and makes his growling. <laughs> his growling noise when it accidentally chomps on the hard coral instead. Uh, she looks at the GoPro of the most recent attack and notices that there was a hook of some kind in his mouth. What is it with Hollywood? And thinking that sharks growl or roar or even, like, grunt. Spoilers, I really enjoyed this movie. And I know I'm, like, super nitpicky about some of these things right now. But, like, that is the most annoying thing. Few movies have good shark logic. That's just something that... I'm going to have to accept. Like, the shark logic is stupid and unrealistic. It's fine. Whatever. Whatever sells tickets, right? But, like, they don't make noise. If you've been with my channel or you've at least seen, like, a few of my other videos about shark movies, 
you should know that they don't have vocal cords. They can't make noises. And I really wish that people would stop making movies and like pretending that they do. It's not harmful to anyone. It's just kind of goofy and stupid. But it just gets on my nerves. Okay, I'm getting off my soapbox now. <laughs> Blake looks at the buoy. Um, I think she serves like 30 yards or something like that. She looks at the buoy and she thinks that she can make like a minute swim to it. Just in case, she makes a video on the GoPro. She finds, I'm not sure what it is, um, a piece of shark rock, uh, a tooth, a piece of coral, I, I, I don't know what that is, in the helmet and tucks it in her wetsuit for later. She named the bird Stephen Siegel, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> she sends Stephen on his way on the half of the boogie board and tells him he's going to make it. I don't really think he is, but good luck out there, little buddy. It's high tide now, and there's jellyfish everywhere. She tries to get a head start on him and swims between the jellyfish, using them as a sort of cover. She gets stung, of course. The shark tries to get her through the jellyfish, but he doesn't seem to like that shit very much either, <laughs> and he had to back off. She says that time to swim to the buoy and gets on, but not before getting a stab in with a loose piece of metal from the buoy. The shark flings itself at her and misses, flying back into the water. She gets herself situated in the middle of the buoy tower, and sees what looks like a cargo boat. She uses a sharp tool in her wetsuit to get into a metal case where a flare gun is. It's like attached to the buoy. She drops the charges into the water but grabs one and uses one shot, but it sort of just like fizzles out <laughs> and lands in the water. But because she's an equator, she makes the buoy lean into the water and grabs another one, shooting back upright. This one also fizzled out and the boat disappeared. And then the boy from the beginning of the movie comes out and picks up the helmet. He watches Blake's recording. Meanwhile, the shark tries to absolutely fuck up that buoy. She decides to fight back and shoots the flare gun at it. But Bruce Jr. ain't taking no shit from a nobody. He hits the buoy with his tail in response. She shoots him again, but because of the oil in the water, he lights up. Bruce leaps dramatically out of the water and back into it, cooling himself off. He gets extra angry and starts biting the buoy fucking it up, trying to knock it over. God as his witness, he's going to get him a piece of Blake. He succeeds and the buoy falls right over and Blake into the water with it. She attempts to swim to the center of the buoy again, but <laughs> knocks her face into some metal. Like in this movie, she's getting fucked up. She's messed up her feet twice on some nasty coral. She got bent by the shark. Um, she had to freaking stitch herself up and she's got like gangrene and she just like completely smashed her face into some hard ass salty metal. If she's not a fighter. <laughs> anyway, Blake gets into the middle again, but only has a few seconds of reprieve when Bruce tries again, tearing that shit up. Blake notices a chain that's attached to the buoy is stuck, like in the middle of some rocks on the bottom um, and some salvage. So while Bruce is busy, she swims towards it to go fix it. Bruce's mouth gets stuck on a hook, so she has a few more seconds to get the chain. It has an anchor on the end, and she likes to drag her down towards some poles that were sticking out of the ocean floor. Bruce follows her and meets his demise, charging right into the poles. R.I.P., my friend. The boy from earlier and his father, who was actually the one that drove Blake to the beach in the first place, come and find the dead man, and Blake washed up on the shore. She coughs up some water and wakes up. Steven Seagull is there, too. I just love happy endings. Unlike the last movie. <clears throat> I'm not better. <laughs> she looks up to the sky and sees her mother smiling down at her. We flash forward. Um, I'm actually not sure how much time has passed. Uh, but she's in Texas in a wetsuit about to go surfing. Her sister and father are there and she's about to teach her sister how to surf. And that's it. That's the movie. I have to admit, that was like a really wild ride. Yeah, it did have slow parts. And, and clearly the writers don't know how sharks work. But other than that, I actually really liked it. Um, as I said in the beginning, the camera work was amazing. And it was probably the best part of the movie. You could tell the shark was CGI, but it did look at least somewhat realistic. The acting was pretty good, uh, except from the father. He seemed to be kind of phoning it in, but he only had a few lines anyway, so 
probably didn't matter. For this movie, there really isn't much I can add to it. Uh, Blake did go to the ocean alone, which is kind of stupid, but she went in the daytime and wasn't bleeding preceding her surfing session. The movie wasn't perfect. It was far from perfect. But I did like that she seemed to feel something when the shark was near the first time. There are survivors out there that when they're telling their story, they say like they got a chill up their spine right before the shark attacked them. And I think it was kind of cool that they added that in there. After some deliberation, I'll give this movie an A. It would have been B because of the lack of shark logic, but... I'm going to be easier on this one because Steven Seagal survived, there were some epic underwater shots, and the movie was just decently well made. And to be honest, I enjoyed it. I hope you guys also enjoyed this review. Um, it wasn't a very long one. <laughs> it was actually shorter than um, From the Depths, but it's but The Shallows is actually like a minute longer than that one. Oh. That's another thing about this movie that I really liked. Sorry to just like add this in here. It was 86 minutes, but it really only felt like an hour. So some of the pacing was slow, like between the the times where she had to like face off with the shark. But it didn't feel like that long. And um, I forgot to add that in there, but that's what I also really liked about it. So... Honestly, even if it's just once, I would say you guys watch it. And if you've already seen it, uh, watch again, because it's probably been a while since it came out in 2016, even though it feels like it only came out three years ago. That makes me feel some kind of way. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm not sure what movie I'm doing next. I might just like pop on Amazon again and see what's free. Probably more trashy movies, but at least I got a good one in. That's it. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.